In this video, we look at transition matrices and Markov chains, which are part of the AI HL only course in topic four, statistics and probability under the subtopic of probability. Now there are five key concepts that we need to work through in this video. And I'm gonna use this example here on the right hand side to explain each of these five. But before we do, let's just firstly define what a Markov chain is. So a Markov chain is a system that transitions from one state to the next according to fixed probability rules. And those rules are defined by the transition matrix T. So for example, we could be talking about the movement in population of people between two cities in the United States, maybe on a yearly basis. So this year, next year, the year after, so fixed intervals. Or another example could be the weather on a daily basis in your current location, whether it's raining, whether it's sunny, and it could change on a daily basis. Or a third example could be say, the market share between two local cafes on a monthly basis in a town. And that's actually the example that I'm using here on the right hand side. Okay, so in this example here, we have the monthly changes in market share of two local cafes, and those changes are described by this diagram here. And this diagram is the first key concept. This is called a transition diagram. So let's, let's talk about this diagram. Let's look at cafe A. On a monthly basis, they retain 90% of their customers. They lose 10% of their current customers to cafe B but they also gain 30% of, 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 of Cafe B's current customers. Let's now look at Cafe B. Likewise, on a monthly basis, they retain 70% of their current customers. They lose 30% to A, but they gain 10% of A's current customers for that next month. Okay, so let's now go ahead and create a transition matrix based off this transition diagram. Now we call the transition matrix capital T, and in this case here, this transition matrix will be a two by two because we have two states, cafe A and cafe B. So let's just set that up. So there we have it there. Now, when we're talking about a transition matrix, the columns are always the current month or, in this, or the current state and the rows are the next state. So let's, let's talk about this top left element here. That represents the customers that are currently at cafe A and they are retained at cafe A. So that will have a value of 90%, or as a decimal, which we, we use decimals in transition matrices, that will be 0 0.9. Looking at the element below that, that represents the percentage that are currently at cafe A, but are then lost to cafe B. So that will be this 10% here. And we can use the same line of thinking for the second column. So this 0 0.3 represents the customers that are currently at B and get lost to cafe A. And this 0 0.7, the customers that are currently at B and remain at B. So that's our transition matrix here. And that represents the change in market share of these two cafes each month. So, that, so each month is the interval. Okay, we now also need to define the initial state matrix. We call this S0. And we are told here to assume equal market share at the start. So our initial state, and I'll just make some room here. Our initial state S0 will be a two by one that represents the initial market share between cafes A and cafes B. Now, if we have equal market share, each cafe will have 50% of the market. So as a decimal, we can have 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And we have now defined our transition matrix, which describes the change in states over time and the initial state S0. We can now move on to the fourth key concept. And this is a very useful concept here and regularly asked in these types of uh, exam questions, some sort of future state SN. So this question asks to find the market share after three months. So we need to find S3. And this formula here is given to you in the formula booklet. So Sn is equal to the transition matrix raised to the power of that N multiplied by the initial state. So therefore we can find the state after three months by calculating S3 and that will be equal to the transition matrix raised to the power of three multiplied by the initial state matrix. 
So we have here the transition matrix T brought down from up above, raised to the power of three, because we're trying to find the state after three intervals, or in our question here, three months, multiplied by the initial state. We can then use our calculator to find out what this is equal to. Let's go and find that out. So we bring the calculator up. Let's go and create a two by two matrix for matrix T. We go menu, matrix and vector, number one create, number one matrix, and this is a two by two. Hit OK. So my values are 0 0.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.7. Now I like to store this in my calculator as a letter so that I can use it for later question parts. So I go control, store, and I'm going to store that as letter T. So my calculator now remembers my T button as that matrix. Let's now go ahead and do the same for the initial state. We go menu, number seven matrix and vector, number one create, number one matrix. This is a two by one with values of 0.5 and 0.5. And I'm going to store this as letter S. Okay, let's now answer this question here. We can now go T to the power of three multiplied by S and we get this result. Now what this represents is that after three months, the market share will be 69.6% .6 for cafe A because Cafe A was the top row in both our transition matrix and our initial state, whereas Cafe B will only have 30.4%. Now, before we move on to key concept five, I just want to touch on that some of the harder questions involving transition matrices and Markov chains will ask to find an expression for a future state in terms of n. So we can't just go ahead and use our calculator to find the state after n periods. It's actually in terms of n, and that's actually linked to a concept in topic one matrices, all about finding the powers of matrices. And, it, and this is the formula here. And there's a dedicated key concept video on that titled matrix powers involving eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, the fifth and final key concept we need to talk through is what's called long-term steady state. Now what this means is, in, and using this example here on the right hand side, Early on, so in the first few months, month one, month two, month three, month five, the market share is changing between local between cafe A and cafe B. And it looks like here that cafe A is gaining market share and cafe B is losing market share because they both start at 50-50. But at some point in the future, the market shares will level out and they will no longer change even though the transition matrix is still occurring. It's still being applied to the current state. But at some point, it'll sort of meet this equilibrium level and we call that the long-term steady state. Now, there are two ways to find that long-term steady state. One is just a quick and easy way. It just, it's just to find SN for a very large value of N. So for example, after 100 months or 500 months. And you can do this quite quickly using your calculator. So I'll just demonstrate that now. I already stored T and S. So what if I went T to the power of, let's say 100, after 100 months multiplied by the initial state? So that's the market share, 0 0.75, 0 0.25. But I don't necessarily know whether that is the long-term steady state. I picked a large number, but after 100 months, the long-term steady state might not have been reached at that point. So I need to test that against the next date, so the 101st month. So if I go T to the power of 101 multiplied by S and compare it, okay, I get the same matrix. So therefore, these are the long-term steady state market shares. Now you won't be asked how long until it reaches a long-term steady state. You'll be asked what is the long-term steady state? And you can just read that off the matrices here. So cafe A will have 75% market share, cafe B will have 25% market share. And even if you did T to the power of a thousand times S, so it'd be a thousand month, it'll still be 75%, 25%. Now the second way to find the long-term steady state is using uh, an algebraic technique, which, which is to solve for S, which is the long-term steady state matrix, which we, which we don't know yet, this is an unknown, when T times S is equal to S. And, and, and the way to think about this is that if we, if we multiply the transition matrix by some sort of future state, if it equals itself, then the transition matrix is having no impact on the state. So therefore we have reached a long-term steady state at this point. Now I won't go through all the algebra of this, that'll probably take 
uh, five, five or so minutes to talk that through. And there are plenty of questions in the question bank that I do show the solution and steps for this. But just to recap, there are two ways to find the long-term steady state for a given system. Okay, there we have it. There's an overview and introduction into transition matrices and Markov chains. I now recommend practicing some of these questions over in the question bank section.